So I plan to put a bulkhead here and there and also at the back of the cabin there and there and I figure that will make the whole cabin into a box beam that keeps the pontoons parallel and big waves. There used to be a bathroom here that I think helped to stiffen the boat. Although there wasn't one on the back. Although there was a nav desk over there. I think you can maybe see that little notch. That, that was a wall for a back cabin. And I guess this part of the bathroom wall was the other wall for that back cabin. Oh yeah, and then right here there was a locker when you came in the door. And so those stiffened the boat, basically connecting this, both sides of the pontoon to the roof. So my bulkheads will be in different places and hopefully it will be okay. I don't know. I think there should probably be a stringer down the middle of this. The very front bottom is filled with foam. And then this area goes to, to the deck hatch. And a lot of people, I think, had... This used to be closed off. There's the deck hatch. And this opening used to be closed off. So you could put sails or your anchor chain and stuff in here. And it could be wet and not be in the boat. But a lot of people, I think, cut those out so they can have a fan in that hatch and it ventilates the boat better. And I'm, I'm betting on air conditioning and I don't know whether it'll be enough or not. Trevor and Jess had the same size air conditioner in one of these hatches and they said it was not enough to keep the boat cool. So I guess we'll see. The boat's in the shade and I can still feel heat coming through the ceiling. In the back cabins. It's just this flat plywood at the moment. And that goes in the transom of the boat. And that is not the back. These end, and then there's the lockers with the hatches at the back, and then the sugar scoops were added on aft of that. And all this wood, these are the bulkheads that I cut for there, there, and there. And I don't know, this area was going to be the bed. And I was going to put the big 300 pound battery there. But I'm putting so much weight at the back of the boat, I'm thinking maybe it can slide up underneath there. and still have enough room for the bed here. And that way we move that 300 pounds forward. The middle section of floor in each pontoon. Jeez. All right. The middle section of floor in each pontoon. When it was at my house had expanding foam in it and then some plywood boards thrown down. And the story marshal told me 
was that that was waterlogged and they carved it all out and they filled it with new foam and then put this fiberglass floor down. And, I mean, given the rest of the boat, I'm not sure what to believe there. There was the last of the water coming out of the boat was here. Oh, yeah, nothing but black. Okay, it was, was the other side of this, and it drops down maybe four inches to the very bottom of the boat before getting to the spot that's dented in by where it's resting on that big wooden block. So I'm thinking about cutting through this bulkhead on the other side under this floor and see if water comes out. I mean I can just drill a little hole and then patch it. I mean, this plywood has no glass over it. So that brace there is resting on the dented part of the hull, so that was put in after the dent. So, yeah, I have to find out whether there's waterlogged foam under these floors. About the middle third of the catamaran. Well, yeah, from, from this back wall of the cabin up almost to the very front wall of the cabin, the middle part of the boat has just that foam and probably no stringer or anything. The most solid part of the boat is this metal thing. It's bolted here. And there's a spot, well, right there, that the compression post for the mast sat in. And there's a compression post went up through the deck to a fitting that the mast would sit on and hinge on so it could be raised and lowered without taking the pole off here. And this is all bracing and stuff. And this goes through the deck, and this is what the stays and stuff for the mast were attached to. These, I guess, are your chain plates. And we're going to use the top of these up above the cabin as attachment points for the solar. And yeah, there's some room in here for the battery, but ah, this part, this is not flat back here. This comes out as like a, something protrudes into the boat here. It's, it's a continuation of this corner here. So the battery can't fit all the way under there. It will stick out here some. And I don't know, maybe this is only going to be a sofa and not the sleeping place because of the battery. That's where I wanted to put it, but we're putting all the weight at the back of the boat. Oh, and yeah, the spray foam is expanding quite a bit to fill gaps. And yeah, apparently that is working. I'm surprised how much this expands. 
going to get out of there before any of it drips on me. And yeah, hopefully we can do the door repair and much of the filling of that. Okay, so that's just it for now. I'm going to get out of here and let this farm finish doing whatever it's going to do. And then I'll deal with the mess later when it's not so sticky. does not look good. Yeah, let's see if I can get a good shot of it. It's backlit by the sky. I might have to do this at night. Okay, so these rivets have pulled out. And there's some holes here. I was really worried about this, but it, it's not as bad as I remembered or imagined. I was concerned there would be a structural issue with this wanting to break here in the middle, but I doubt that's going to happen. And, and this structure here, I was thinking maybe it was necessary to strengthen this keep it from wanting to boink, bend and, you know, break right, bend or break right there, but I don't believe so. I think the foresail, the jib rigging attached up there, and that's what that was for. This goes all the way through the inside of these hulls, and this glass to both sides of each pontoon and it it keeps the pontoons from being able to do this if it was attached just here the boat would be a lot weaker because the pontoons would want to do that I noticed that when making the catamaran out of the two canoes if you just tied the two canoes together or had a board between the outer edges the inner edges of the two canoes it wasn't stable at all. And, but if you had a board across both canoes all the way past the outside, as soon as you lashed it down tight on both sides so that the top of this was forced to be in, the, in line with the board and couldn't move relative to the board and you did that on both, that was the thing that made lock the two canoes together and they worked as one. And its attachment here, it's not too bad, but it looks like there has been some stress there. This should probably be reinforced. And I'm not sure whether this should be trampoline or not. I asked Trevor if like waves splashed through here and he said yes. But I never really specified like whether that was spray bouncing off of the halls and just splashing through there or whether waves actually go over the, if this was covered, would, would a wave come up and actually lift the boat here and create structural problems? I'm guessing no, but if anybody has an Iroquois catamaran or a similar catamaran, mention something about this. Is there some reason not to replace the trampoline with deck? And it's nice and smooth here. 
ready for fresh barrier coat and bottom paint. There's a repair needs to be done here. It was done very poorly. And yeah. So we're gonna have to lift the boat and prop it up differently. This side just didn't get sanded. I think it's okay there. The real problem uh, with the way the boat is held up at the moment is this. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but the hull is actually dented in considerably where it rests on this block. And it might have been okay when it was first set here, but then Marshall took the windows out and a couple feet of water accumulated in the boat. So we're going to have to lift it. And then there's these skegs. And I don't know, maybe we'll lift it by this. Jeff was saying that this is a good hard point attached securely to the hull. I don't know how stiff the hull is above this, if it's any stiffer than the rest of the boat. But at some point, once we're done, much of the skegs will be cut off. We might leave some, probably leave some. But from what Trevor told me and Marshall told me, these interfere with the ability to steer the boat with the outboard. You're trying to shove the stern around this way or that way with the outboard, and these are resisting that. And then there's these sugar scoops, which a number of people at the boatyard here have said is the worst worksmanship they have ever seen on a boat. Several people said that. I don't even know what to say. And according to boatyard lore, Doug hit this one with the truck. And then it looks like somebody took a grinder to it to try and, I don't know, begin a repair. And now the plywood is splitting apart like this. One of Jeff's suggestions was that these are nice for getting on and off of the boat, the sugar scoops. But that I should try to modify them so to have a boarding ladder there. And so I do have this ladder. And if I cut along the line, and drill the, there, this ladder should be able to fold up there and also fold down and deploy. And this will just, instead of being, see, like that, following that angle, it'll just come and then get cut straight off right, right there, just like that. And it makes that noise. And then more glass has to go over the top of all of this because, yeah. Uh, and this brings us to this box. Marshall had this attached to the boat. And 
his plan was to turn it into a speedboat and put two 200 horsepower outboards on this box. And, well, I mean, you can see it's, it's, well, they probably used half inch ply there and, and there's got to be a layer of glass on it, at least. So Jeff is helping me with this. And these are the instructions. This has to come down seven inches. And it has to lean back 12 degrees somehow. And it has to be a hell of a lot stronger than this. And then it has to be held on the boat better. There's these two two by floors and then there's these the the beefiest thing that Marshall added <clears throat> were these two by sixes along here and they're glassed in just terribly they glassed over this bolt there's all oh, bubbles in the glass. I mean, this is going to have to be... There's only one layer of chopped strand over this. And it's tabbed down, well, I mean, wherever the glass ended, but it has one layer of tabbing. I mean, a nice idea, but only just thrown on here, one layer of tabbing, and It was done so they could show Marshall something was in place and he didn't know any better, I think, was the problem. And the same with these 2 by 4s This is chopped strand in one layer. And tabbing goes out two inches, maybe. So, let's see, I'm going to have to grind this flat. I'm going to have to grind a lot of this down to bare glass and then get tabbing all the way out at least to here and down probably to the water line. A few layers starting small and then wider and wider and wider. And then redrill. These are drains for the cockpit. Redrill those. So I'm going to have to do all the fiberglass work to keep to keep this wood attached to the boat, right? And here, let me go forward a bit. That's so I'm looking back. And then really glass the box into these through bolts, stuff like that. And then and then really beef up the box. But the stuff holding the box to the catamaran isn't on very well at all, either. So, that needs doing. Oh yeah, there's bare wood up there. But yeah, it's gonna have to be glass all along, all of these, to support that box and keep it from falling off of the boat with the motor. And yeah, I mean, this is the other sugar scoop. Oops, sorry. And everywhere, there's just one layer of tabbing for show. Let's see. There we go, yeah. I knew this was starting to come apart. Some, someone hit this with an angle grinder. This is the other sugar scoop. That's, that's the terrible one. And this is the other one. So yeah, this is going to need work. Of work. 
It's everything with this boat. Yeah. It's foam. And, oh, no glass there. There's a little bit of glass run over the edge there. Ending like that. <laughs> it's a terrible boat. Somehow I have a real affinity for terrible boats. <laughs> <laughs>